When a volcano erupts, the world watches in awe. Rivers of molten lava spill down mountainsides, ash clouds tower into the sky, and the earth rumbles like it's alive. But long before we understood tectonic plates or magma chambers, ancient people looked at these terrifying natural events and asked, why? Their answers were stories powerful myths that offered more than just explanation. They revealed how humans saw the world, how they made sense of destruction, and how they connected with the land that could nourish or destroy. Let's begin with the myth of Peel, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. According to legend, Peel lives inside Klauia, one of the world's most active volcanoes. She is passionate, powerful, and temperamental. When she is angered by disobedience, mortals, or rival gods, she unleashes her wrath in the form of lava flows and fiery eruptions. Islanders who live near Klauia often speak of Peel not just as a story, but as a real presence, a force you must respect. They leave offerings to her, food, flowers, or chants. To them, volcanic eruptions are not just geological, they're personal, they're messages. This human connection to volcanoes through myth isn't unique to Hawaii. Around the world, ancient cultures created similar stories, rich in symbolism and emotion. In Japan, Mount Fuji is not just a sacred mountain, it's said to be the home of a goddess as well. And in ancient Rome, people believed that Vulcan, the god of fire and metalwork, lived beneath Mount Etna. His forge would roar with flames, and the smoke of his labor would rise in the form of ash clouds. Every eruption was a sign that Vulcan was at work or that his anger was growing. These myths may sound like fantasy today, but they carry a deep truth. Volcanoes are unpredictable, dangerous, and deeply intertwined with the lives of those who live nearby. When science hadn't yet unlocked the mechanisms of plate tectonics, myths offered not only answers, but wisdom. They taught reverence. They reminded people that the earth is alive in its own way, and that human pride or carelessness could provoke catastrophe. Now, in modern times, we understand what causes volcanic eruptions. Beneath the Earth's surface, intense heat melts rock into magma. When pressure builds to high, that magma forces its way to the surface, creating the explosive force we call a volcanic eruption. It's science, but it's also still a kind of story. A story of pressure, resistance, and release. A story of what lies hidden, coming suddenly into the open. But here's where myth and science actually meet in a surprising way. Both tell us that eruptions are not random. Just as ancient people believed that eruptions were warnings or consequences, science tells us that volcanic activity follows patterns. Warning signs and triggers, seismic tremors, gas emissions, and bulging ground are all signals. Just like the myths, science says, pay attention. The mountain speaks before it explodes. Perhaps the real lesson here that myth and science aren't enemies. They are two languages trying to say the same thing. One speaks in symbols and stories, the other in data and measurements. But both point to a deeper truth that the Earth is not just a collection of rocks and gases, but a dynamic, powerful system. And that our survival depends on how well we listen. In many indigenous communities today, both views are held together. People monitor seismic activity and satellite data, yes, but they also remember the old stories. They honor the mountain, leave offerings, and hold ceremonies. These aren't just traditions. They're ways of staying connected to nature, of staying humble in the face of forces beyond human control. So when you hear about a volcano erupting, whether it's in Iceland, Indonesia, or the Pacific, you're not just hearing about geology. You're hearing echoes of ancient myths, whispers of gods and goddesses, and the enduring voice of the earth itself. You're seeing the same fire that early humans saw and feared. The same mountain fury that shaped legends, destroyed cities, and gave birth to new lands. And maybe the greatest insight of all is this. The mountain doesn't erupt out of cruelty. It erupts because it must. Pressure builds, the earth moves. The fire within can't stay buried forever. 
Just like in our lives when emotions, truths, or changes build up inside us eruption becomes inevitable if we don't listen early enough. Volcanoes, then, are not just natural disasters or mythic beings, they are mirrors. They reflect what happens when we ignore the science, when we don't respect the balance, when we forget how fragile the surface of our lives really is. So the next time you see footage of lava flowing down a mountain, remember, it's not just science, and it's not just story, it's both. And in that fire, we find a warning, a wisdom, and maybe even a kind of grace.